guys, I'm Cam from the Session Team, and today we're going to talk about metadata. We're going to talk about how you create it, and we're going to talk about what can happen if you don't protect it from people who might want to use it against you. So you may not know what metadata is, and I wouldn't actually blame you. Essentially what it means is information that describes information, um, or commonly referred to basically as data about data, which you kind of use, we all use every day in order to, to access information in the vast sea of our hard drives or the internet. Um, but we actually create it all the time by doing things like sending messages. So every time you send a message, you create four primary types of message metadata. Uh, firstly, the who, secondly, the when, third, the how often, and fourth, if you really fuck things up, where. So every time you send a message, there is at least one sender and recipient. Um, this is metadata that's attached to the message, information about that information. Um, secondly, when, obviously if you've ever used a messaging app, you've seen a timestamp. Um, and then how often, the frequency with which you're sending messages between certain people. This can paint a pretty clear picture about your relationship with someone. You know, if you've messaged them one time in your entire life versus repeatedly every day. Um, and lastly, where? If you are using an extremely unsecure channel, you might have geolocation data attached to all of your messages, which would be just really bad. It would be really bad. I, I would recommend that you don't do that. Even if you're using an encrypted messaging app, which you should be, and which many people are, because a lot of the most popular uh, messaging apps in the world, like WhatsApp, even Facebook Messenger has an encrypted option, they do, encrypt the contents of your messages, but they may not obscure the information that is attached to those messages, which is just left out there for anyone to come along and find, for anyone to collect. And it can be used against you in a variety of ways. The most um, benign of which would be being collected by corporations in order to uh, influence you through targeted advertising. And on the less benign side, message metadata can be used against you by the government. For example, if you're a whistleblower who wants to reveal information which is for the public good, but illegal for you to reveal. Now, your metadata can be collected in a variety of ways. For example, if you were to use SMS, which don't use SMS, um, it's not encrypted at all anyway, so your message content will also be accessible. But if you were to use SMS, your telecommunication network, whoever you, whoever you use, has access to this information. Um, anyone who works with that company has access to this information, and it can easily be turned over to anyone who requests it, whether that's a, a government or whatever those circumstances are. Secondly, if you were to use something like Facebook or Instagram, um, the metadata attached to your messages is just stored on those servers. You're zucked, basically. You're zucked. There are many people who work at Meta who will just have access to these servers and access to that information. And again, it can very easily be turned over to anyone who requests it for whatever reason. So there's a lot of information there about you, who you're communicating with, and the way that you're communicating that is not secure. Even if you're using a private messaging app that has a strong encryption protocol, there's a lot of private messaging apps out there and they offer varying degrees of metadata protection. WhatsApp is widely considered to be fairly private because they use a strong encryption protocol, but there have been instances in the past of message metadata collected by WhatsApp being used to, for, to go to my previous example, uh, prosecuting whistleblowers. This happened in the last couple of years. When choosing a private messaging app, it's really important to take a look at the metadata protections that they have to know what kind of protection that you are getting when you use it. At Session, we set out to create a private messaging app which did everything possible to obscure metadata and protect our users. There are three core things, three core elements of Session's design which achieve this. Firstly, anonymous sign-up. When you use Session, you don't require any information that could be linked to your real-world identity. This covers the who, the first aspect of message metadata. Because there's no personal information used to sign up and make an account, the messages that you send 
aren't attached to your phone number, for example, which you've used a million times for other services to link your identity and which can be used very easily to identify you. Secondly, onion routing. Now, anonymous signup is a very powerful way to obscure your identity, but onion routing takes it to the next level. Not only are you not using any personal information to make an account, but when you use session, your IP address um, whether that's coming from your phone or your laptop at home, which is linked to you, is not linked to your activity on session. Um, we do this through layers of encryption, which essentially encrypt your traffic and obscure your identity as it moves through our decentralized network to your recipient and back to you. So if someone did try to surveil the decentralized network, the power session, it would not be possible for them to link the messages that you're sending to your identity using your IP address. The third point is decentralization, which I just touched on briefly. Basically what this means is that Session routes your messages through a massive decentralized network owned and operated by our community um, of nearly 2,000 servers around the world. Obviously, if you compare this to a centralized system where your message moves from your phone to a centralized server owned by the company that makes the messaging app you're using to the recipient, it is a lot harder to track the traffic, to track the message data through that system in a network like ours than it is in a centralized system. That in combination with points one and two makes it extremely difficult, bordering on impossible for someone to track your message metadata, paint a picture about who you are, what you're talking about and why, and that's why we built Session, because you deserve to have private communication. As we move more and more into a digital world where we inhabit digital spaces every day, communication is a core human need which currently is under threat by surveillance by many of the ways that people communicate in the digital world. Session is a new way of communicating that's completely private and you should check it out. I hope that you've learned a bit. Uh, I hope that you can now take steps to protect your message metadata a bit more from the people who want to collect it. Um, and yeah, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.